Welcome everybody. So really appreciate you joining us for today's session. We are yeah, really, really excited to be joined by um, Ono, who is um, incredible. I'm going to speak a little bit about what he does and his background. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Brody. I'm the community manager here at Unite 2030. Um, and for those who don't know too much about Unite 2030, you're just tuning in for the first time. We are an organization where we aim to unite and empower the next generation of change makers where we're looking to end things like poverty, inequality, injustice, and climate change by the year 2030. We work very closely with the sustainable development goals um, and we are youth run and youth led and we're always looking to, to change the world one step at a time. We, yeah, super, super excited um, to be doing a three-part series on leadership with this first session today. We have been long in the process of working with the incredible Ono who is a leadership expert um, in his field and is going to be um, helping facilitate and mainly facilitate this session. So a little bit about Ono. He's Ono's professional career started as a design engineer at a startup in Silicon Valley, a fascinating technology which was inspired by nature and still has the potential to create dynamic energy savings in the fields of fluid dynamics and turbo machinery. After half a decade in engineering, he pivoted to sales and it was there that he realized his engineering background had given him pretty much zero training in emotional intelligence or teamwork or leadership, even though those things were actually pretty important to success in the world. So for the next five years, as he professionally explored sales and psychology, he also went on a mission of personal exploration to find out how people tick and how leadership works and how teamwork works. After a successful five-year run as National Director of Sales, he left his sales role and dedicated himself to full-time to de developing leaders, either in group settings like this or one-on-one -on -one executive coaching. He's worked with scores of companies and hundreds and hundreds of leaders over the past 10 years, and he's here today to share some of the highlights of what he's learned along the way and help us all become much better leaders. We are so, so grateful to have Ono here. And if everyone can give a massive thumbs up, applause, react in the chat um, and welcome him into an incredible session. So Ono, over to you, mate. All right, Brody. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'll get a slide going just because that always helps with the talking points. Feel free to adjust the view on your left side, on your right side there as well. But I got to start with a big shout out to you and to the Unite 2030 team, Brody, for firstly, just for putting on this event. And I know what it takes to do this and produce it behind the scenes and also the other events that you have going and that you've been doing for years. So thank you for doing this. We need it. Um, the next generation needs it as well. I also want to thank those of you who are here today and are carving out some of your precious time to be here. Um, there's a guy uh, who's pretty good at investing. I think his name's Warren something or other. Maybe you've heard of him, Warren Buffett. Uh, he's going on record to say the best investment you can make is in yourself and so you're doing that here today and so that's good advice coming from an expert in that domain um, I as Brody mentioned my background actually started in technology and engine in engineering so maybe there are some of you on the line here who are also helping actively working on green technologies to try to make the world a better place and then there is a human dimension to this making the world a better place as well and so hopefully several of you are working on that, whether it's a social or a cultural or a policy lens, that's really important too. So I found my calling doing this, the human side of, of saving the planet and of making the world a better place. And so I love this topic of leadership. I think it's a gateway to so many interesting conversations and so much personal and self-development. And it allows you, the better you are at leading, the bigger lever you have to help and affect the world around you. So I think that's what you can expect from today's workshop. There should be two outcomes from this today. One is that you will become more effective at the doing of leadership, and you should be able to get more results of the kind of results that you want to get out there in the world. So I think that's a good outcome. And secondly, the way that you can do that should be more easeful after you see what you see today, after we do this exploration together. And being here, you get the perk of this being an interactive session. You could watch videos on leadership, and I recommend doing that. And you can read books on it, too. There are several books on leadership, many of them very good. And being here today, you get this interactive, personalized, customized benefit to it as well. So I always want people to take away something practical 
And that's my promise to you in this workshop that it'll be applied and it'll be practical and hopefully it'll be interactive and you'll find it fun as well. So that's where we're going in the next 90 minutes. Um, there are a couple of agreements that will help us to get there. So feel free to use the chat for any observations that you're having or insights, or if you want to throw in a question, um, please write that just to everyone and then we can see it. I know Brody and the team are going to keep an eye on that. And if you see something that really pops, please raise your hand. You also in the reactions tab have an ability to raise your hand virtually. And then uh, if we have time, I'll call on you, come off mute. See the third line here. My request is that you please do share as concisely as you can. And that'll give more people a chance to share as well. If your bandwidth allows and you did your makeup and I don't know what time of day it is, where in the world you're calling from, but if you can leave the video on, that would be great. Um, it's great for the group plenary sessions here. And certainly when we go to breakouts, I think adding that video on piece will be very helpful. Um, please adjust your view settings as much as you like. There's probably a slider on the side. You can move it to, to see more of the gallery or you can change, change the view setting. I'm gonna trust that you're all Zoom, uh, Zoom skilled at this point. So that's all I wanted to say about that. Anything to add Brody or the team? No, you've done perfectly. Sound good. Okay. Yeah. And I'll stay on for some Q&A at the end. If there's something that we didn't quite get to, uh, let's definitely do a few minutes then. Okay. So since we said that it's going to be interactive, we're going to have you launch uh, into a breakout room here. Um, so Brody's going to set those up. You'll have about nine minutes or 10 minutes to explore in that breakout room together. And here's the question that we, we want to prime you with. Since this is a session on leadership, you probably already have an experience of good leadership. You might even be lucky enough to have an experience of great leadership. Or So what is it that that best leader or leaders in your life? There are two questions that I want you to sit with and share with the group. Firstly, how did you feel working for that other leader? And, and if you heard other people emote and talk to how they felt, you can share that as well. So what were some of the feelings that this leader generated? And then thinking about the leader themselves, what were some of the actions or behaviors that this leader took? What were some of the things that they focused on that made them effective? So when you get to your breakout rooms, you have a minute or so to introduce each other, do a little networking, that's great. Please again, turn your videos on. And then have a conversation where you share the air as well as you can. What were some of these feelings? What were some of these actions? And when you come back, I'll be curious to hear from all of you. So as we're debriefing the breakout rooms here, this is what you said you were feeling. You were feeling working for this best leader, heard, respected, valued, supported, inspired, patient, trusted, enabled. Yeah, keep the words coming. encouraged, capable, authentic, a chance to be yourself around this leader, with this leader, comfortable, loved. Thank you for putting that in there. A couple of you have put that in there. And the group keeps shifting and changing, seeing inspired and respected at the top of the list here. So inspiration is clearly a skill that leaders uh, have, the best leaders have that. And the fundamental of respect, I love that that's coming through. Um, from my studies, I've learned that different cultures um, organize in different ways. Some are more hierarchical, some are more authoritarian. Some people are okay with that. Some cultures are okay with that. Some are more the opposite. And so having all the different cultures on this call that we do have, we're getting to see a little bit of the through line of what everybody likes and appreciates about their best leaders. So if I can ask the group, and if anyone wants to come off mute and, and answer this, why is it important to pay attention to the feelings here? Why might we have done this exercise? Any brave volunteers want to come off mute? I will. I will say I think uh, it's important to recognize how good leaders make us feel because maybe hopefully one day we can also make others feel the way that we like to feel. Hmm. 
Okay, it's so a bit of the golden rule there that we want to yeah. pass it on. We want to create these feelings. Yeah. And what does it have to do with leadership effectiveness? Paying attention to this. Yeah, Druti. Um, I was going to say that when we pay attention to people being emotionally involved in a, in a, in a cause, people are more likely to allow themselves to be led by someone who they can emotionally invest in. Mm. And when they feel emotionally invested in something, they're likely to contribute to it. So effect, So for a leader to have impact on the people who, follows the, who follow them, sorry, I'm just rambling. For a leader to have an impact on the, on the people who are following um, the leader, he needs to make sure that, that they're emotionally invested in the cause and they need to be yeah. emotionally included and have a sense of belonging. So he or she as yeah. the leader. Yes, definitely. Yes, he or she. I was just, yeah, that's why I was <laughs> jumping catch. around a bit. Yeah, that's great. So it, it, it increases the effectiveness because emotion changes our behavior. And if we're feeling inspired, we do more, right? If we're feeling supported, we take more risks. We will take on more work. If we're feeling encouraged, we do more as well. So there's a direct tie to effectiveness. Plus, there's a noble aspect to it. Yeah, last comment. Kareem, you have your hand up. Yes, I, I suppose that great leaders never really differentiate themselves from the group that they are uh, leading in a given scenario. And in this case, mm. uh, their ability to uh, feel uh, the emotions of the of the group or be on the same line in that regard uh, significantly contributes to building trust, which Excellent. just improves communication and the work environment overall. And that uh, is something I think Crucial. We're in. We're in, their leaders are in this with you, right? Yeah. So they want to be in a good feeling and a good vibe as well. Yeah, and an increased trust. Yeah, and one of the 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 model that we'll be exploring a little bit later on, uh, it's called the leadership circle. In in one of the stories about it, they came up with this pithy quote, and I see it here in a poster: "Leaders bring the weather." I think that captures leadership really nicely. That we, the emotions are contagious. And whatever room you're in, the most contagious emotions in that room are the leader's emotions. So that's why it's important to uh, take care of ourselves and be present and be composed and uh, to have to be skillful as the leaders as well. Okay, so this is part one was what are the feelings that um, we are experiencing and that we want to generate when we're being effective leaders. Let's have a look at part two now. And so I'm going to go in the background here and change the poll EV so that we can activate the next poll. And if you go back to the, the link, the question now will say, what did this leader do or focus on that made them effective? So now I want to capture the actions and harvest those from what you had in the group. What were the sorts of things this leader was doing, was focusing on? Maybe we're saying, and again, see if you can keep it pithy to one word or so. That tends to work better for this, this word all. Okay, so the leader listened. That was one thing that they did. They appreciated. Uh, they were respectful. So that's one of the things that their actions were focusing on. We have another couple of clicks on listened. They communicated. They empathized, they delegated to good leadership action there. Sure, they cared. Thank you, author. Thanks for trying to be with us. And those, some of you wrote in the chat actually for the last go round as well. Uh, so thank you for doing that and keep doing that. And you can thumbs up, you can give each other encouragement on the comments that you like there. So what did the leaders do? These excellent leaders that you worked for in the past. Or in your moments of excellent leadership, what were some of the things that you did? There's a thoroughness, uh, a discipline. Uh, there's also compassion. There's caring. There's listening. Sure. There's a, there's a desire for excellence, a striving for excellence I'm seeing in there. You know, involving people. Yeah. I love it. Someone put love back in there again. So I think maybe the Beatles were right at some level. All you need is relatability, there's appreciation, there's resilience. Yeah. 
Is there anything surprising on this list as you look at what other people are submitting? Or anything you feel like is, is not popping as much as you thought it would? Anyone can share. I actually noticed one word that I wanted to ask. I'm curious to know your thoughts on it. I saw the word excellence. Yeah. Like, I'm curious to know if, if whoever wrote that, but also I'm curious to know what you thought of the word like excellence when it comes up. Yeah. Anybody want to share? Who, who wrote the word excellence in here? If your internet allows, if you can come off mute. Well, let me let me play it back to you, Brody. What does it do for you seeing that word? Uh, my first thought is perfection, which for myself mm. feels like um, it can be very like positive, but at the same time, there's that feeling of like if it's not this idea of being perfect and and very excellent, that it's going to be a failure. Um, mm. And that's what made them a very good leader that they have this idea of doing everything so perfectly. Um, but I'm also in my head trying to think like. Is excellence like excellence in terms of the way that they're promoting their vibe rather than the actual work at hand as well, like their, their personality, I think. Yeah. I think I'd, 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 my response would be along similar lines, which is that there's a, I mean, for everything in life, probably there's a spectrum. And so it's not so black or white, good or bad. If you push excellence to the absolute limit and it becomes perfection, that could that could be a, a not very helpful version of excellence. But I think for me, when I see the word excellence, I mean, I don't think you're going to inspire too many people by saying, folks, let's be average this year. Let's, let's just do a little less than we did last year. Let's see if we can, we'll phone it in. Like that's, you know, so there's, there has to be some all the way back to this mountain climber picture that we started with here. There's something about, there is a pushing. And I think the best leaders get more out of us than we know is possible. Um, there's a whole book on that and they call it multipliers. And so we, we and, and we enjoy it. I mean, we say, God, that was hard and that was a struggle and I would totally do it again. I loved it. And I got a lot out of that. Yeah, Maddie, did you want to chime in? Yeah, so I don't think I'm seeing it, but um, as you mentioned before, I think reflection should be on this list of mm -hmm. words as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm currently in grad school and one of my um, leadership professors is really, really into reflection. Um, she, Lucky she, you. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she focuses on it in our class um, very heavily. And so I definitely think that reflecting as a leader makes you effective because you're looking at yourself as the human you are, even if you are in a leadership position. Um, and it definitely, it it definitely trickles down to the team. I think that's huge. Yeah. And when we get to this leadership model in a few minutes, you'll see that self-awareness is a huge part of effective leadership. And we get there through reflection, through journaling, through taking feedback, through looking in the mirror, uh, as tried as that analogy may be. Yeah. Esther, last comment, and then we'll, then we'll move on to the next thing. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I wrote it, I also wrote it down in my in the chat because um, I did I don't think I see that here. Um, but I my my leader I can say she asked um, she asked a lot about ambition. She likes to talk about that because that um, really lets her know who who she has in her team. So. Mm -hmm. um, I could really see that one day when she asked a lot about what I love to do and what I'm doing in my in my free time, I could see how she was so passionate and she started smiling. I never saw her smile like that while we were talking because uh, she was actually talking about my results at work. And at that time, my results were not that great. But as I started talking about my ambitions, she her face i don't know something happened to her face that's beautiful and after that yes it, it made me happy to see how she responded to my passion and mm -hmm. she told me esther if you could see your face right now as you're talking about your passion it's really 
I really like um, seeing you like this. And I would like to see you like this when you are doing your job as well. So if you could try to, to mix your um, passion into your job, then I think that would help for you to get better results. So from that yeah. moment on, she started um, trying to fit me into little projects that really would um, actually inspire my ambition. So I got really happy when a few days ago, she sent an application for me. It's an application within our company where I can get the chance to grow further. So when she sent that for me, I, I was so happy and I felt like, hey, she, she knows my ambition and yeah. she got a reminder and she saw that. So, she so we could put that in I, as maybe um, passion yes. or development or yes. mentoring or something. A little hard to put into one word, but I love the spirit of what you're it's, saying. It, it, it could be considered coaching, mentorship, support. And I it think. could also be aligning uh, ambitions and goals of the bingo. Um, right, two, right. two really nice ways to put that. Right. Thank you for, for adding that in, Esther. You're right that if we see the humans in front of us and if we ask them, we I mean, if we're doing these things, we're engaging, we're caring, we're listening, there's space for that. And I think what I'm hearing in both of your comments is do a little more than that too. It's not enough to just passively sit there as a leader and listen. But there's a there's a drawing out, there's an asking, there's a believing in the person, and there's a coaching right. and, and a pushing in that way. Yeah. So what does yeah. all of this roll up to then? So let's let's say we've got I don't know 23 behaviors here on the screen, things that we should be doing. We have uh, 35 feelings on the previous page that we wanted to do. For um, uh, summarizing all of this and being able to hold it, let me ask you in the chat. How would you define leadership in one sentence? What's the ultimate goal of a leader? What are, we, what are we trying to do here? Many ways that we can do it and there are many impacts that it has. We've explored those. But if you could sum it up, what's the ultimate goal of leadership? It might be hard to sum up in one sentence. You can go more than a word here. You can go a sentence. So we're getting some influence. I think that's a pretty close synonym for leadership. Yeah. Management. Management and leadership are overlapping. There's quite a lot. I think the best managers are good leaders. Um, but you can actually lead without being a manager. So there's a bit of a distinction there. To guide others, to create impact. I like that, Sarah. Yeah, there's a growth aspect to it. Right? We're bringing something into being that doesn't exist yet, or we're growing something that's existing. That's what leaders do. Bring out the best in people, making effective decisions while keeping the objective and people in mind. Yeah, that's a nice wrapping your arms around that. Positive influence, visionary, guiding a group. Yeah, so when we're leading, there still looks like some of the commonalities here is we're, we have some kind of direction. There's some kind of vision. There's a place that we're going, and then there's the people that we're trying to get towards that vision, uh, motivating those people to move towards that as much as you can. I don't, I don't actually know if you can motivate someone else. You can't really reach in and motivate someone else, but I think you can create conditions where motivation is likely to happen, where you can respond to what people said would be motivating to them. So let me share two definitions from the literature that I think might be helpful here in our exploration. So the first one is from a, a research project called the Leadership Challenge. Um, they went around for uh, 25 years of work, summarized in their, in their book, the art of mobilizing others to want to struggle for shared aspirations. That's one way to, to think about leadership. And I remember when I first saw that, I thought, struggle? Or shouldn't leaders be kind of making things easy? But no, I think back to the point about excellence, you're actually wanting to get people to struggle. And if you can get them to struggle together, then we can achieve more results. So that, that's one one-liner that I've, that I've liked over the years. Another one that's even shorter is that leadership is about creating the conditions for success. That's your job. 
probably for other people to succeed, but there is a way in which you can actually lead yourself too. You can be the own leader in your own life. And so in that sense, you're creating conditions for success there. And the folks who came up with that, uh, it's an Australian consulting agency called LIW. Um, they break it down further and say, there are three, three conditions for success, clarity, climate, and competence. So you need to have the clear goal and why are we doing this? And everybody needs to be clear on their tasks. You need to have a supportive climate that both physically, hardware, you need internet, you need a computer, you need a laptop, you need software, and you need relationships and you need culture. And then you need competence. People need to actually have the technical competence to do the work. And if you get the right mix of those three things as a leader, now you can really create some success. So just wanted to ground us here in a, uh, and we're all sort of, what I'm hearing in the chat is a very similar thing. There's something about a goal. There's something about moving people towards it, mobilizing and being the leader to do that influencing. So then how do we do that? Um, and, and you have to be influenced too. Thank you. Uh, with Len, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, to, to be in it, to be in the group and to be influenced, um, the best leaders will do that too. Okay, so let's get to uh, the clarity climate competence. That was a nice little tangent. I'm happy to come back to that later, but it isn't the actual model that I really wanted to show. Um, that's coming up on the next slide. Anybody know who said this quote, by the way? Leader, a leader is best when people scarcely know she exists. When the work is done and when the aim is fulfilled, the people will say, we did this ourselves. Famous quote about leadership from the originator of the Tao, the Tao Te Ching in Taoism, I think 6th century BC, um, ancient Chinese philosopher. There it is, Isaiah, thank you. Yeah, so that at a, at a deep spiritual level, I think, this is what we're going on about with leadership too. Okay, so it sounds nice, Ono. How do I actually do that thing? Let's take the journey there for now. And so the best way uh, I could think of to do this was to keep it interactive. Rather than show slides, I want to invite you to this mirror board where we're going to be able to look together at a, definite leadership, a definition of leadership. And then you're going to be able to um, interact with that I'm going to ask you some questions, um, how, the, how you see yourself reflected in this. Um, and then you're going to get your, give yourself some homework at the end of that too. So I'm going to stop the screen share for a second and screen share my Miro board instead. <laughs> Folks are able to join, hopefully, in the, in the, from the link in the chat here. And so if the internet gods are with us, you're now going to see this board duplicated twice. You're going to see it on the Zoom screen, and you won't be able to move it or edit it. And then you're going to see it separately in a web browser screen. And that one, you will be able to move around and zoom in and zoom out. I've made everybody a viewer so that we don't accidentally draw stuff on the board. Um, but at some point, if that becomes a limitation, write things in the chat that you would like to see on the board. But firstly, can I just get a quick thumbs up? Does everybody see that there's a Zoom version? Seeing a few nods, enough nods. Okay, video's on, thumbs up. Okay, great, great, great. So let me give you a quick tour of this model first, because it may seem a little um, complex at first, but I think in just a few minutes here, um, you'll get the essence of it. So uh, some of you may have seen this before even, if that's great. Um, maybe there'll be comments you want to add to the chat. But this is uh, called the Leadership Circle. You'll see the, the name of it here. Um, the creators of this spent 20 years researching leadership as well. I think this is the best model out there. And uh, many other executive coaches agree this is the gold standard for evaluating leadership. So this is what a blank model looks like. And so let me give you the tour real quick. Firstly, this horizontal bar is a, a defining characteristic. So what you want is, are these 18 behaviors? You want to be doing these. These are the creative behaviors. And what you want to be avoiding are these 11 behaviors. These are the pitfalls that us leaders, we stub our toes on. Um, and if we get stuck down here in this reactive zone, you can already tell by the word reactive that it's not really going to be very good leadership. 
Um, it's also quite tiring. And back to my initial um, uh, teaser that leading, there, there can be an effective way to lead that's less tiring for you and that you don't experience as much burnout. Burnout happens when we're operating down here in, in this red zone. Okay, so that's step number one. We're top half, bottom half of this circle. Step number two, there's a, a polarity on the one side of the circle, a leader needs to be focused on tasks. And there are two wedges here that focus on the tasks. So what is the thing we're gonna get done? And when are we gonna get it done by? And why are we even doing this? And who's doing what? And what's the system that's gonna enable all of this work to get done? And let's be decisive and let's be strategic. Yes, these are all things that leaders can do and should do. And, at this point in time, anyway, we'll see about the future. But until now, you still need humans to go and do the work. So how well do we relate with others? So these two wedges of the circle highlight behaviors that the research has found make us more effective at relating and engaging others to do the work. So you see this first wedge is about relating here. And the second one is about self-awareness because leaders bring the weather and what we're bringing matters. So if, if trouble strikes and the leader freaks out, then everybody else freaks out. That's not that helpful. So the best leaders will balance these wings between relationship and task, and ideally balancing them 50-50. And there is definitely room for your own personal leadership style. And so that's the authenticity wedge here, where you can show up with your values and how you like to lead. And if you think about those best leaders, they were themselves. And they knew they had foibles and they knew they had rough spots and blind spots and they were okay with that. And that makes a person really magnetic in a way when they've accepted themselves and they own that and they live that. So there's consistency there, which creates safety. I know who this person is. I know how they're going to react. And there's a, um, an inspiration. There's a modeling, which I think some of you pointed to as well. So the inner circle is a summary of the outer circle. Uh, this is just the titles of these different behaviors. And what you want to be doing is balancing task and relationship and be as conscious as you can be. Let me just say a few more words about this creative aspect here. Um, you already said this, I think, in the chat. And if you think back to a famous Martin Luther King speech, for example, I have a dream. Okay, it's not reality yet, but here's the dream and here's what the dream looks like and come with me to the dream and let's create this together. Leaders are in the business of creating something, you said growth earlier, of making something happen that didn't exist yet. So that's what we mean by creative here. We don't mean um, good at art or, or you know, that kind of creative. So we're conscious, we're thoughtful, and we're generating something new. Okay, that's the quick tour number one. Let me pause here and see if there are any questions in the chat or if anybody wants to jump off mute and ask a question. Just checking, is the session being recorded? Yes, it will be recorded and you'll be able to keep this mirror link. I don't plan to um, cut the access off. Although if you want to grab screenshots, you totally can. Let me slide on over here. In summary, do more of these 18 top half behaviors and fewer of these bottom half ones. That's what That'll create those conditions of leadership. And if you want to, this is a possible homework item after today. If you want to fill out the self-assessment, it happens to be free you'll get back a portrait maybe looks like this. So for this leader, we might see, okay, so there's some reactivity happening. Certainly there's more below the center line than there is above. So eventually we wanna, wanna pull this in a little bit here. So we might pick one of these behaviors, maybe back to Brody's point, this leader is a little too into perfection. There's a bar here at 60%, uh, between 30 and 60%, we're sort of, a mixed bag of positive and negative here, because it's actually good to have high standards. Nothing wrong with high standards. That would be in the 30, 40, 50. Once we're at 90 or 100 here though, we have to have perfection and the perfection kind of has us by the back of the neck. And so we're a little bit out of control. We're a little reactive in that sense. So keep the high standards, get this down to 30 or so, and we'll be okay. You don't have to completely eliminate it and become uh, some kind of saint. Uh, imaginary wise. But anyway, if you want to take your own self assessment, it'll look something like that. Um, and you'll get some insights. We have a hand raised. David, David Darko.
Do you want to come off mute, David? If you want to ask a quick question, you can. Yeah, please can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I came here late. Oh, sure. I just, That's... From, uh, I just go from duty. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And Mani, I think you had a question. Explain the diagram once more. Uh, why don't I? Uh, you'll see that happening as we go. I think that'll be helpful to you. But again, in, in, in five seconds, you want to be above the center line. You want to be doing more of these 18 things. And whatever tendencies you have down here below, you want to be doing less of those things. Recognize those things in yourself and um, do some work to shift those. So uh, I think the best models take things that you already know and organize them. And so we asked you earlier, what is it that the best leaders do? And you said a number of things. And so Brody here, maybe and team, has been uh, quickly scribing those over from that wordle. The best leaders, you said, were interactive. And they had discipline. And they had empathy. And they listened. And they were respectful. And they pushed you. And they listened to you. And they coached you. So all these behaviors, this sort of cloud of behaviors can actually be roughly distilled or more accurately distilled into these behaviors. If we look at the task side, a good leader is decisive and acts on things and jumps on opportunities quickly and promotes a, a vision, and gets people excited about that, and then makes strategic moves to get to that, highlights strategic options. We consider the system and how do people produce results sustainably? We don't want to use people up. We do want results for the greater community. We want to show up as ourselves as we're going through this. We want to make sure we're learners and we're modeling that. Um, we want to be composed and, and under pressure. We want to be balanced. We'll go switch to green here. We want to be balanced and have a good work-life balance. Uh, we want to be uh, somewhat selfless. Uh, we go back to that loud sir quote. It's not about us. It's about the group. And just to fold in a question here, is it bad to be driven? No, it's okay to be driven. I'd say sort of halfway driven is good. But if you're too driven, then what usually happens is across the circle, you have a very low balance because you're driving, driving, driving. Uh, I'll get to the reactivity in a minute, but there's sometimes a tension across the circle where if you have a bit of an anchor on one side, it probably makes it hard to do some of these behaviors on the other side. It's one of the elegant things about it. And just to finish the tour on the top, we want to be emotionally intelligent and to be able to engage, respect, meet people. We want to coach, mentor, develop. We want to be a good collaborator and foster collaboration among our people. We want to foster team play as well. And we want to show that we care. And a lot of you said that was on the list, caring, love, uh, feeling valued, feeling respected. So these are some of the feelings and behaviors uh, that you have to guide you here. Let me pause one more time if there are any questions. Oh, no, I actually can... do have a question. To just yeah, bring, bring it on. Ahead. I want to ask. Um, you mentioned as well, like when trying to look at this, I guess, like trying to evaluate yourself, where you fall on each thing. I think the question I want to ask, especially maybe it comes also as a leader, how do you, like what's the suggestion to almost, I guess, evaluate it as objectively as you can without either giving yourself too many or too little because you feel guilty or you yeah. are trying to almost like tell yourself that you're not more of one thing. Is there like a, a common practice to try and make it as objective as possible? Yeah. I mean, the short answer to that is to do a 360 and in 360, what that means is that you're looking all around you in whatever group or organization you're in. So what does my boss think? And because sometimes people treat their boss differently than the people that work for them. So I, I want my boss's point of view and I want, I want the people that work for me's point of view. And I might want my peers' point of view and my customers' point of view. And so then everybody weighs in on how often is Ono doing these behaviors? And I might think I'm doing it all the time and they, they just not seeing it. And so I think the 360 is the way to get that honest feedback. Cool. Yeah, getting second opinion is definitely important. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's if if you're really constrained on funds, 
and you want to try to get a free 360, you could ask someone to log into this platform and do the assessment thinking of you. And then so it, the, the platform thinks it's a self-assessment, but really the person was thinking of you. They could give you the results. Now, you would know exactly what they said. So it may or may not feel safe to do that. But I th I'm thinking about having my wife do that for me, for example, because um, I went through one of these at work. And I'm like, yeah, but how am I showing up at home? That's pretty interesting. So uh, could get some real reality. Yeah. Blend, did you want to ask something or chime in? Uh, thank you. Uh, well, my question is, uh, how does a leader can make sure that they leave the legacy behind? And throughout history, there have been so many great leaders. They mm -hmm. did great jobs. Mm -hmm. However, when, once when they leave, the legacy is not, is not left behind. Yeah, do you have an idea for that? Well, that's a, a question that's addressed to you. Let me hear you and then... <laughs> I'm a coach, so I'm, I specialize in making you do the work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, in, in my opinion, is it's it's a, a leader should be able ha, should should have the skills to tr transform the, the, those skills and attributes in, 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 into his team or her team. So this is how you make sure that you you basically raise the, the future leaders and then uh, you make sure that the, the great work uh, keeps continuing. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, I agree. I think coaching would be my one word answer to that, which is raising up those leaders. I think the second part too, if we go to the task oriented side would be the system and the systems thinker. And is there some enduring policy change or systemic change that that could last and could live on a long time. When Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery and the Americans, that lasted for hundreds of years. Now it wasn't a perfect solution, still not perfect. And it long, it well outlasted his time and reign, for example. So that was a systemic change. So I think, I think both would be my answer. It's a good question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think also when you're asking that, I thought of, parenting and i think leadership and parenting have a lot of overlap too and i think in our in as parents we're trying to help the next generation get a leg up and get ahead um you know and in some ways we're just trying to copy ourselves and keep the thing going yeah that's sort of a base level of it but i think at a higher level our legacy lives on through the values that we pass on and the survival strategies and the resilience so I'm seeing that in the chat too a little bit that leadership is everywhere. It's within the family. Yeah, so. I, I wanted to add as well with that honor, and you just touched on it, but like, I think that's such an important, an important message to like remind us young people as well that like being a leader isn't also you know we we set these lofty expectations of ourselves to change the world and, and change everything, but you know changing the world can mean so many different things for so many people, and especially like what Sarah said, you know, changing a family member's life. Is, can be the same or as more rewarding as it can be changing hundreds of thousands of people's lives. So I think remembering that you are a leader in your own community as well as the world is, is a really nice reminder that there's so many different aspects to it and it's not just in the workforce or it's not just in a, in a business sense. Plus one to that. So, so um, mixing in Brody's comment here a little bit of, okay, how do I get people's feedback? Um, I think actually your own feedback is probably pretty good. And what I work with clients on this, uh, let's, let's look at the task relationship spectrum, for example, here. So in a minute, I'm going to ask you to plot yourself on this spectrum. Are you pretty balanced in between or do you, do you lean one way or the other? So let me give you a little quick description first of, of what each one is, because maybe these terms are new. So if you're on the task oriented side, whether you're on the sort of creative side of task, the healthy side of task or the more shadow side of task, the controlling side of task. What it sounds and feels like a little bit being on that side is you might have a mantra that I like getting things done or the end justifies the means. Get the result, doesn't matter what it takes. You might have a very high quality bar, um, have a sense that being busy is a good thing and that it's good to be busy, it's important to be busy, that winning is a good outcome and that that's really important. 
Um, you like giving directions maybe, and you might have a sense that technology and intelligence are some of the more valuable assets at your organization. And that above all, push comes to shove, it's the results that matter. So probably a bunch of you have a task wing. If that's your stronger wing, that's fine. Let's have a look at the other side and then I'll ask you what your balance feels like. On the relationship orientation side, and again, the healthy and unhealthy versions of this, or, or effective and ineffective, I could say it that way. If we all get along and the culture is good, the results will take care of themselves. That's what this sounds like and feels like. Let's just take care of our people and then they'll take care of the results. Uh, famous management theorist, Peter Drucker, observed that culture eats strategy for breakfast. So it's actually the culture that really matters. That's what really affects behavior. So we should focus on that. We're in this together. There's no I in team. And consensus is good too. So maybe we it's better to wait around and get more data and get more input until we get consensus. I might think that people are the most valuable asset in an organization. And I might think that push comes to shove. It's the feelings that actually matter the most, not so the results. So if I'm really in that camp, I'm going to be way down here on the relationship wing. If I'm on the task side there, if I feel somewhat balanced, that's fine. And it's also possible, considering both your healthy and unhealthy tendencies, that neither feels true for you. And you might be part of this third wedge that um, I haven't talked about yet down here. But if neither feels true for you, maybe I can talk about that wedge uh, after we get to vote here. So instructions, uh, those are written down here. I am going to try to uh, organize the screen here so that we can vote on just the shapes, please. And just here, let's see, I'm going to give you each one vote. So you get to pick one of these dots. And if you're on the mirror board, if you could go to the browser version of it, please, then you should be able to click on one of these dots. It should look like this. And you'll be able to decide for yourself, how do you feel? How balanced do you feel on the spectrum? Or do you sort of lean one way or the other? So yeah, in the chat, if people are just trying to figure out where this is, there's the link there. So if you just yeah, click on the link, it'll take you straight to this mirror board. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to vote on this spectrum kind of where you feel like you lie. We have a couple of people voted. You'll have to be on the mirror board for this to work. And if it's too hard to get to the mirror board, you can write your number in. Mm. So it goes from, for those who, again, can't access it, it goes from negative 50 to 50. So if you want to write down the number in the chat and that's a bit easier, also more, more than welcome to do that. Let's see if we can get the technology to work. Esther, raised hand. Um, yes, I, I don't really understand what we should vote for. Your own balance. Are you heavy task related with a little bit of relationship? Or are you heavy relationship with a little bit of task? Or are you oh, sort of uh, feel 50 50? Um, right now, I'm a little in between. Um, a few years ago, I was the task oriented person. Okay. So now I'm a little, a little bit um, on the re uh, relationship side. Yeah. Okay. So there's possible for movement in your life and in your career as well. And maybe someone Isaiah has put in the chat 20. Uh, we're getting some a minus 10 or a plus 20. So if we could add those votes. What do you notice by looking at the spectrum here? There's a little bit in the middle. And then there's certainly some who are more one-winged than the other. 
I certainly know for myself earlier in my career, this was a real tension because on the one hand, I'm a competitive athlete and I really like to kick ass. And on the other hand, I really like to be friendly and I like to be liked. So if you play tennis with me, you'll notice this, that I'll, I'll, I, might be, I might be winning. And then I'll say, oh, hey, well, let's, let's have fun with it. You know, and, and then I'll give up a bunch of games and we can kind of, I just want us to be friends really at the end of it too. I never quite had that killer instinct that, that some people have. So you can have a tension between the two, even if you're in the middle and you feel sort of somewhat balanced, that might be a tense balance as well. Well, so and what I find is that even if you weren't able to vote just then, just thinking about this concept, people tend to get um, the same result here as what the 360 would say. So remember early on in the session, I hinted that the, you might be getting some personal development out of this and that you might get your own flavor of personal development plan. This is about to happen here where the first thing you do is you think to yourself, okay, am I more, am I a little too task oriented? Maybe if so, maybe my edge is to be more relational and pay more attention to that. Um, or the vice question, versa. A question yeah. I saw earlier come up. I don't know if you saw it was, is one more important than the other? Hmm. I mean, I think the research would say you want to balance both. I think in different cultures, back to that question, it seems like some, there might be a cultural aspect to this. Um, I think uh, the, probably the most effective leader might have a sense of that or could even ask their team and to engage in that as well. So that is a good question. Yeah, and I think even if you, it's nice to be totally balanced, it's also incredibly difficult. And I think there's something to be said for a strengths-based leadership approach where we just, we are who we are and we kind of have a certain shape. And so if I know that I'm heavy task-oriented, I should hire someone else who's got an eye on the relationship thing and then I should listen to them. And that way together we can run the thing like this happens in households sometimes, uh, you know, one person is more task oriented, they wear the pants, the other one is more nurturing or something like that. So sometimes that works to have a balance and in organizations. You see this too with the CEO choosing a COO or a CFO or someone else to balance them. I think what I want to, for me, the most interesting part of this model is what I'm about to share now. Because Let's say you identify that you're a little too task oriented and maybe you should be more relational. That could start to sound a bit like a New Year's resolution, depending on how you frame that. Like it's not in your instinct and it's not in your nature, but you want to be a better listener because you see, you know that that's important and you saw that all over the slide. Okay, so I should just be a better listener. Okay, by a force of willpower, I could try to be a better listener. But my internal system and my internal makeup is not wired for that. And so you're going to lose that willpower battle in just a few weeks. So better, I think, to understand how your internal system is wired. And then if you can modify and upgrade that, then you won't have the internal tension as much. And it'll become easier to do these other more creative behaviors. Does that make sense as a hypothesis, as a direction? And I see this with a lot of my coaching clients that they, once they get a sense of their reactive type, so I'm back to the Zoom now on the mirror board. If you want to join, join the view here, I think I can even ask everybody to come view me here. I want to give you the quick tour of the reactive half, and then you can uh, customize this for yourself. On the task side, you see here in the middle of the circle, there's a thing that says identity. So let me just highlight that. So at the center of this leadership circle, both effective and ineffective is our identity. And so if we're on the identity and task side, what's happening here, if you can look at my hands on the screen, we all have an identity and we all have certain results that we generate. And we're a little too fused with our results when we're on this side. And so now if you threaten my results, you just threaten my identity. And does anybody like having their identity threatened? No, I don't think so, right? So we go into fight flight 
this is like the animal bottom half of the brain here. So we do whatever it takes to clear that threat. And that's why this is a reactive pattern and why we call it that. And so there are a couple of different flavors of that. There's, I am the quality of my results. So I'm a perfectionist. And if and my name is on that slide, and if it's not perfect, then uh, it's going to get back to me and we can't have that. So fix the slide. It has to be right. I'm going to double check. It's going to take me 45 minutes to write an email that I should have written in 10 because I need to choose every single word perfectly. You can feel how this is not going to be very efficient leadership. I am the volume of my results. So I, I am going to exist and I'm going to get ahead in this world by cranking out a lot and I'm going to outwork people. That's going to be my survival strategy. It kind of works. You can get results doing that. It just doesn't scale very well. And it's hard when you start leading others because you want them to work just as hard, but then they don't, but then you take over. So you, can, you see there are problems there. I am my title and I've got to be moving up constantly in the organization. Otherwise I'm done for. And then autocratic sounds like, look, I know how to do this better than any of you. So if you'll just shut up, please, and do it my way, we'll all get up here on time. Okay, any questions? No, good, go. That's a, it's a more command and control, sort of militaristic style. You can get results doing this stuff. It just doesn't feel very good, and you don't get those feelings that we had early on, and it doesn't scale very well. So if you were on the task side of the spectrum, maybe some of that resonated with you. I want to speak to the folks who were um, self self uh, aware that they're more on the relationship side of the spectrum, because you might have a similar feeling here between identity and relationships. So now I have my identity, I have my relationships, and those two are really fused together. And so if my relationships are threatened in any way, I feel threatened, and I don't like that. So I don't I don't enter into those conversations. So what this looks like is I probably don't rock the boat very much because I don't like to ruffle feathers and I just follow the rules and that way everybody's safe and happy. So I'm conservative. I might say yes and go along with other people's ideas because I don't want to hurt any feelings. So yeah, sure, let's do it your way. That's fine, we'll do it your way next time. Maybe we'll do it differently. Belonging, you can imagine if a leader says boldly, we're going this way, who's with me? And then nobody comes. Uh, nobody's with me? Okay, well then maybe let's not go. That can be scary. And it might not lead to effective leadership. And if we're more passive, we might wait. Just wait for consensus, wait around. We might need a little inform more information. You see Brody's revealing here the behind the boxes, what that sounds like and feels like. So if these are your issues, going across the circle to being strategic and decisive and visionary, that's going to be really hard if you think that your survival depends on people liking you. So no New Year's resolution, no amount of willpower is going to make that happen. We have to look at this and say, okay, where did I, where did I learn that being liked was the right way to go and the only survival strategy? Because not everyone seems to have that. If you look around, certainly not everyone has that. So, so I made that up? Okay, well, if I made it up when I was nine... Maybe now that I'm 30 something, 40 something, I could change that. You know, relationships are important, but they're not my identity. Okay. And if I can really inhabit that, now I can imagine pushing a little bit and I can imagine engaging in a little conflict. And that's okay. Is this making sense? Can I get a thumbs up? We'll yeah, I think, Honor, we've got somebody. one question. Edwina, I think you've got yeah. a question. Edwina, sure. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to point out, um, as you mentioned about your relationships, oftentimes are tied to the financial component of you being able to be a leader, knowing that sure. money is involved. And so when money is involved, it really does affect, like, for instance, your paycheck, or mm -hmm. it affects your scholarship, or it affects um, you being able to grow or move forward. And so I think for me, it's just, it's always a struggle to try to figure out how do you create a balance between knowing that you understand the leadership components, but how do you understand the added challenges and navigate those yeah. when money is involved? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say to that, that remember there's a percentage scale here. And so 
being likable and being pleasing and going along with people, that's fine up to a point. And it's actually a very smart strategy and it, it might be the right thing. The problem comes when that becomes our only strategy or we feel like that's necessary, but it's actually not. We're just making up. We're just stuck that we feel like that's really the only way. So if we're taking it to extreme, that's when we get, that's when we get in a problem. So if you can look at your situation kind of clear eyed and say, that's actually what's needed right now, then great. Then you're being more conscious about it. And I would say it's not a reactive survival strategy. Yeah. Sesame, did you want to ask a question too? Oh, you were off mute for a second. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can hear you. Yeah. Um, I'm asking concerning the reactive, but um, will it not try to cohesive? I didn't catch like that. A one more time. I mean, the, the re, on the reactive, I mean, we need to not strive to cohesive because um, cohesive is somehow autocratic and tries to punishment more often. So can you take me into that? Uh, I'm not following. There's a word in there I'm missing. Brody, do you, mean, you, do you mean cohesive? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, the word cohesive was throwing me off. Yeah. I don't know what you mean by cohesive in this case. To me, cohesive means sticking together. Yeah. So stay for the Q&A and maybe we can get into this. I'd like to get an answer for you. Let me finish off the tour here actually. And if Prince, if you're able to hold that question for a little bit. I think the third area that we get hung up is a different survival strategy where we decide at a young age that I, my identity is tied to my ideas, actually, and my intelligence. And so I'm going to survive by being the smartest person in the room. And I might join the bridge club or I might join the chess club or go to the science Olympiad. And in any given room, as long as I can establish that I'm one of the smartest people, I'll be safe. So I may not be likable. I may not be the class clown or the or, you know, homecoming king or queen or something. I may not get the best results, be the best athlete, you know, something like that, but I'm smart. And that's going to be my thing. And that's okay. It's okay to be smart. Nothing wrong with that. If we're taken a little too far, though, it can come off as critical. Because one way to establish the intellectual high ground is to shoot six holes in someone else's idea. And now I have the high ground. It can come off as arrogant because I might name drop that I went to this university or I had this success or I had this, or we sort of bullying for status. It's close to autocratic, but it's a little bit different here. Autocratic really wants to get the results. It wants the power for the results. Arrogant is more interested in just being seen as okay or as top. And if you don't listen to someone with high protective, they'll just pull back and bail on you. Fine, go ahead and crash and burn. I don't care. So a lot of engineers that I work with and that I coach have this pattern because engineering, you get to be right and you have the one right answer. And if you get it first, you're the man. Uh, a lot of lawyers have this because they like to go back and forth until someone's right. A lot of doctors and physicians I work with have this as well because you get to be the expert and you get to be right. And it, it gets in the way of effective leadership because Eventually, people say, well, why, why am I even here? You know the answer is you're the smartest person in the room. Why don't you just do everything? And now you don't have the engagement. Right? So if you have the tendency to jump on this pedestal, which I do sometimes, know that it's going to have an impact and try to get under, why do I have this pattern? What, what, where did I come up with that this was the right idea and was a good idea? Did I see this modeled somewhere? So there's some inquiry, some deeper inquiry that, that can help lead to answers there. Okay. So I'm looking at the clock. In my fantasy world of this setup, we were going to be here 10 minutes ago. And we would have had time for a breakout room. I'm not sure we do anymore. Um, would folks want to do a shortened breakout room? We can, we can pull it out for like 
four minutes, I guess. And then I think let's do a little five, six minute breakout room. Yeah. 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 Let's do five minutes. And then when we come back, we can wrap as well together. So if you can set that up for us, Brody, and then yeah. the instructions, we can paste in the chat too. Let me do that first. Sure. So here is the kind of. Thank you for doing stuff. that. And you might want to copy and paste this chat to um, some kind of note document that you're taking or screen share, uh, screenshot it. Because I don't know if you have time to answer this right now, but if you follow these prompts, um, you're likely to get to some gold that's going to help you be a more effective leader here. So let's do five minutes in the groups, see if you can do some sharing, um, and we'll see you back here to do a quick debrief. I know I actually had a question while people were coming back. Please. With the the three blue stars in the middle, I'm my ideas, I'm my intelligence. Yeah. You mentioned there's like very specific types of um, people in different workforces, like you mentioned, that that tend to have these traits. Are there any of the the red or the yellow that have certain workforces that have traits as well? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I I have not done research on that, um, but if I were to improvise an answer, I think in the more healthcare helping professions, you might find some of the more relational folks. Um, in the teaching professions, you probably would find that as well. So the, those gold stars would be more in the personal, interpersonal domains. And I think in terms of professions where you'd see more task orientation, yeah, I mean, Certainly sort of athletics or sports or professional sports or anything like that, you, you have to have, you have to really want results and you have to have a lot of drive to, and a, and a fair amount of perfection. Um, I think maybe, maybe law enforcement as well, where you're, you're sort of trying to enforce certain policies and laws and rules and things should be a certain way. Uh, you may not find as many sort of, sensitive souls with bleeding hearts in in that domain for sure so and i think and i think we evolve you know, through our lives right we're on this constant learning journey five years from now you might not be as reactive you do some therapy or you have some life experiences or you go to a retreat or even a workshop like this you come down and you you read one of these books here i've got a, you know, nine ten eleven books that you might want to read that cause you to think do I want to lead differently? Actually, do I want to? so just because you were sort of formed that way early on, there's definitely room to evolve and to grow out of that. And you'll find police leaders who are very sensitive and in touch, and you'll find nurses who are very task oriented. And so, yeah, I don't. That's my improvised answer. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Cool, cool. Yeah. We also no, wanted to stress everyone we're going to go about maybe 10 15 minutes over time so we understand if you if you need to go or, or do anything we just want to let you know um if you can stay for the next 10 15 minutes amazing but we just want to give you that out so that if you if you do have someone to go we would understand no, wait, back to yeah time. sure and for anyone who can't the next couple of steps were uh in terms of homework um there's on that mirror board there's uh, also a creative circle just below that so um feel free to pick a behavior in that creative that you want to do more of and then you can uh, find ways to work on that there are a number of books that match that as well uh, you'll see those i'll give you a tour of those visually in a second if you want to do the 360 uh, then we can do that reach out to me you see my email here you can find me on linkedin if you do reach out to me on linkedin please do put in the unite 2030 piece of it so that i know um, who you are i might recognize some of your names but I try to be a little careful about who I connect to on LinkedIn. So please put that in. That'll help me remember. And you can imagine that there are team dynamics that sometimes form as well when certain people in the team are more task oriented and certain people are more relationship oriented. They might not get along. They might have names, colorful names for each other. And that might be getting in the way of team dynamics. So there are things we can do to help them work together more effectively. So back to the mirror board then, you'll see that there are these creative competencies here. And I've, in the actual assessment, there are four or five per slice. I've only just picked out one to give you a flavor of it. Um, but if you do the free self-assessment, you'll get 
all of the definitions that come with it. And if you want to read more about these, the two books from the creators of the Leadership Circle, Anderson and Adams here, Scaling Leadership is the um, lighter one. And if you really want to go deep on it, take Mastering Leadership. Here's a link to the profile. We'll put that, actually, we could put that in the chat as well. Maybe I'll just do that real quick while I'm here. Thank you. We will add links. We'll share those, won't we, Brody? So you can scroll down there. You can take the self-assessment. And for any of the different domains that you might have, if you find yourself a bit protecting and you want to be less so, Brene Brown's work is really good for that top size. If you want to be more self-aware, Dan Siegel has some really good content there. If you want to be more coach-like, this is the best little book on coaching, the coaching habit, I think. Uh, more Culture Code, one of my favorites. And if in general you want to understand these reactive patterns, these are the top two books, Immunity to Change and the Internal Family Systems Therapy, which you don't have to be a therapist to read that or understand that. I think it'll give you a sense of how these uh, different parts of you act up from time to time and uh, have a more powerful internal system after seeing and integrating all that. So I'd love to hear it just in the chat, or if you want to come off mute, what, what do you have now that you didn't have 90 minutes ago? Well, what was most valuable to you from today's session? It was nice to have a moment of reflection at the end here. That we can hear back from you. What do you have now that you didn't have an hour and a half ago? Yeah, gracious. Hey, thank you. Uh, I came in a bit late, but uh, thank God the managed to catch up. Well, I just want to respond to your question that you asked. You know, every time that I try to speak in front of many people, I kind of get nervous. And that's something that I've been sharing with my people. I feel like, you know, I don't make sense when I'm speaking. Mm. I've been trying to fight that several times, but I don't know how I can get over it. But then you asked me, what do I have uh, apparently? I'm looking at your presentation and my, my head, in my mind, I feel like, okay, gracious, you can do that. You can do it. Like I have the forces in me. Like, you know, I feel like I can do it. Even though when I know I can do it, but my spirit is telling me, gracious, you can do it. And you can look at it and it's very easy. But back here in my head, like, no, you can do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. About ask you, is that presentation yours personal or you can share it with anyone so that, you know, I get to go through it? Yeah, so uh, in terms of today's presentation, Brody's made a recording of it and that's going to be available on the Unite platform. So yeah, you'll be able to look at that. I think if you read these two books, you'll ingest enough of it that you'll be able to share. And that would actually be my challenge to you uh, for your growing leadership is to... Read about this, study it a little bit more, and then go teach it. Go share it, because we learn by teaching, and I think you're ready. I can see it. Yeah. Have anything else showing up in the chat? What are, what are you taking away from today? What was most valuable today? Edwina. Uh, yes. I think for me, it's you don't know what you don't know, and I always understood the importance of when you're the most smartest person in the room, it's time for you to switch. And yeah. I'm very happy that I was able to come into this room and, you know, take myself away from the other rooms. And this room was very nurturing. So thank you. Excellent. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Here's some self-awareness strategies are coming. Um, some exciting books that are on the side. Most of those are audiobooks as well. I almost only do audiobooks these days. These are mostly just trophies for show. I haven't actually cracked them open. I just listen to them. I find it much more efficient. Well, so for the good work that you're doing, thank you for that. Um, I think Brody has a few words at the end here from the Unite 2030 standpoint, but thanks Unite team for being here. Thank you all for your attention and the best investment you can make is in yourself. So you've made some today, keep making it and reach out if I can be of service. Yeah, I just want everyone to have a massive virtual round of applause in the chat, whatever it is for Ono. Seriously, like we we cannot thank you enough. I've, I've had so many messages flooding in seriously saying that it was just genuinely 
um, important and incredible and the type of work that you're doing it was so so helpful um literally I've, I can read out some of the messages even like someone said seriously helpful didn't know I'd be able to do something like this somebody said I really really appreciate it this is so great so there's lots of messages that I'm getting that, are, that people are loving so seriously like we really, really appreciate you yeah, taking the time to, to make this amazing session, make it relatable. Again, there's so many people from, from different backgrounds and everybody is just on their own journey of leadership. So I think, again, we, we can definitely all, and I'm sure everyone can agree, we, we speak collectively that we really do appreciate um, yeah, everything that you do, especially um, in terms of you being a leader and the, the way that you're changing the world to develop other leaders, which is awesome. So what I also wanted to, to do before I forget as well is I've just kind of been making a, a thing some of links. So I'll just speak to everyone about the things that I'm sending into the, the chat. I know it's a lot, but you'll be able to see. So first and foremost, um, I've just put Honor's linked in there as well, but I, I did mention and, and Honor's also said that if you do want to even just um, connect or reach out or ask a question or it is, just please make sure that you say that you're from the leadership event so he gets a, an idea of who's messaging him. Otherwise he unlikely might not see it. Um, as well as that, he's also got his email. So if you have any questions as well that you want us to follow up, please don't hesitate to do that. Um, I've also put in my email. I'm, again, the community manager here at Unite. So a lot of you I know have already part of Unite. A lot of you just saw our, our event online. So if you're interested in knowing more about other events that we're doing, Ono is going to be staying on for a bit more of a Q&A afterwards for about five, 10 minutes. If anybody has any questions, um, more than welcome to say whatever you prefer. Uh, and then the two other things I wanted to send, the first one is a platform that we have called Circle at Unite 2030. That's where you'll be able to access the video recording most likely next week when we just publish it. So if you click on that, make a free account, you'll be able to also network with a whole bunch of different change makers around the world um, who are part of our programs, both online and in person. If you're looking to get involved in some programs as well, um, especially when it comes to leadership and, and SDGs and change makers, then this is also the right thing for you. Uh, and lastly, we have a, a quiz night next week, um, pretty much the same time next week from memory, or maybe it's tomorrow or next week. Either way, if you're interested in coming to that, I've also attached the registration link in there if you want to come and, and have a, um, a good old time. So in saying that, again, we really appreciate your, your time. The fact that no one's left yet, it's been 31 for about 10 minutes is also cool. I was expecting people to slowly drop out. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to kind of stay on for five, 10 more minutes. We know we're already late. So there's, you know, this is our, I guess, wrap up of the finishing. Um, and Honor's just going to stay online if anyone did have any questions that they wanted to ask about leadership or anything that he's mentioned today. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess it's open. If people want to either write in the chat or raise their hand, we can kind of get to it. Uh, I'm happy to start off because I have one question. I've, I've known Honor for two months now and We've connected so much, but I actually have not asked him, what do you struggle with most about leadership? <laughs> I've, I've never asked you about that. Yeah, jeez, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, I think it's the visionary piece. So I, I tend to be very present oriented and that helps me in empathy and in feelings and in being in the moment, but I'm not a great planner and I'm not, I don't think about the future very much. So the good thing is I married a woman who thinks a lot about the future. So she's always thinking ahead and planning ahead. And at first that was kind of annoying because I was like, honey, we're on the beach. We're on vacation. We're supposed to be enjoying this, right? All the spiritual teachers say, enjoy the moment. And she's like, yeah, but next year, I think we should do this and we could have done this better. And it's like, what do you like get in the moment? And well, but she fires back. Look, if I don't plan, then we're not going to be here next time. So Fine. So a little bit of planning, a little bit of letting go. I think that's really helpful. So I just don't, if I need to keep doing that consciously, it doesn't come automatic. Definitely. Did anyone have any other yeah, questions or thought? Well, I remember Prince had a question from a while ago, which we didn't, we didn't manage to, to get to. Sesame as that. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there was a few people that had some questions that you wanted to ask again, but now's a cool opportunity. Um, yeah, if you want to ask how he got involved into leadership, that sort of stuff, that's also a possibility. Whatever, whatever people would like, this is your opportunity. Otherwise, we'll just jam to some Mumford and Sons. <laughs> exactly. We'll just have a, a listening, a listening, <laughs> a concert. listening party. Miguel, haven't heard from you today. Go yeah, on. Miguel. Are you listening? Yes. Hi. Okay. 
hello, Ono. Uh, I don't know how, how old are you, but when your life, in your life, like in life journey, you realize about the leadership, uh, like you, you just figure out, oh, I need to think about it. Like when you're married, when you finish your uh, grad school or yeah. since the boy, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when no, that's you... great. I, I mean, my answer to that is I, I used to be really interested in how do things work. And so engineering was the perfect field to study because I got to learn about things and how to make things and how do things work. And it, after five years of engineering in my career, so I was 25, 26, my boss suggested that I try sales because we had this product designed and I needed to get out there. Someone needed to get out and sell it. Um, it was even a bit of a joke at the time. He said, look, you've got an accent, so maybe you should go sell it. And because uh, Americans like Australian accents because of Crocodile Dundee or something. I don't know what it is, but... Anyway, so that's how I got into sales. And he also, I think, a step ahead, he was thinking, well, you also is a helpful thing to learn about emotional intelligence and all the soft side of leadership, like being a smart engineer is one thing, but learning all this other stuff is, is really important. So that was when I first started to realize, as interested as I was in how do things work, I'm actually more interested in how do people work and, and how do I work and you know, at the time in my relationship, I was doing some things that I saw my parents do. They were not happy. They got divorced. And I'm like, why am I repeating this crap? Like this didn't work, but it was in there. It was stuck in me as a sponge. So I went to a couple of different retreats and workshops and got to examine like, oh, that's why I do what I do. Okay. Now I'm starting to get a handle of this is how I work. This is how I'm put together. So it started in a way from a self, like looking for peace. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a man, I'm an athlete, I'm an engineer. So where's the emotions and all of that? I was not supposed to have emotions. I'm not told to have emotions. Emotions don't matter. But I have big emotions. I happen to be really a heart-centered guy. I mean, like, that's my thing. So how, who am I in all of this? And so it was partly that personal journey that I realized. And what I love doing is helping. I love helping others. And people had said, you should be a coach. I know you should coach. And maybe they meant tennis or water polo or something like that is what I thought they meant. And then I realized when I was about 30, 31, I left my sales job and realized I'm going to try this coaching thing, this management training, this coaching development. I want to give that a shot. So I got to a point in my career where I thought, okay, I'm either going to leave my startup and join another green technology company, or I'm going to do this psychological human helping and that feels like it's actually good enough. And uh, I don't need to, do, it doesn't need to be engineering. I can kind of let that go. Definitely love that. I saw Prince, that a Prince had a question, yeah. I think. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much. It's quite amazing. Um, yeah. It's late now, but I really just want to, I want to wait to the end of the program. I'm yeah. talking from Abuja in Nigeria. Fantastic. Um, it's 11.44 p.m. right now. Mm. Um, yeah, my question is this. Um, I want to speak from the African perspective. Um, the, during the course of the presentation, I move into the, the aspect of uh, autocratic. So, and I saw that word and uh, I quite have a question around that because especially I want to ask when you are leading people you are meant to get the result but I've came to realize that in a lot of cases you are leading people people don't want you anymore or some people are meant to guide people and uh, you are not able to get the result yet you don't want to resign why are the leader refuse or fail to quit when they are not able to get results for those people they are leading in the society. I think so. I had a little internet break up there. Was the question okay? Why does my it, question uh, is that my, my question is this simple uh, people are failing to lead, people are not able to provide the quality of leadership the society wants from them. Yeah. Yet they refuse to kill 
They refuse to quit. They refuse to leave the state. Why? Sure. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, power has its privileges. It's it's nice to be in power. We sometimes make money, or we feel safer, or it's nice to tell people what to do. Um, so I I think there are there's prestige. Sometimes it's a status thing, and sometimes it's a, a resources thing. Um, yeah, I, it would be great if people moved aside and said, you know what, you're a better leader than me. Let me give you the keys. Um, people clearly don't seem to like me. I, I'm going to go work on myself. But I, I think there's strong reactivity happening in these leaders. That's probably why they're not that effective in the first place. So they're in a state of defense and of fight flight a lot of the time. So it's hard to think big and be generous when I'm fighting for my life and I feel like I'm, I'm under, under attack. So um, that's my short answer to that. Yeah, that's definitely a hard one, especially that type of thing. So we, we appreciate all the questions. We're going to I think wrap it up there just with time. Um, because Esther, Esther had one. Esther was trying hard. Oh, Esther. I didn't okay, say Esther. Esther. One more, one more for Esther. Yes, I had my my hand up for a sure. while. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't say <laughs> my bad. No problem. Um, so, so I spoke uh, about the relationship side, but as as you were moving along with the presentation, I could notice that I um the this, I was at the task side, mm -hmm. but I was not doing it well. So now I'm trying to balance it. And I don't really know how. So mm. what are the like practical things that I can do to balance the relationship side and the, the, the side that's more result? How do you call that? Task? Yeah, task. task oriented. Yeah. Yes, I want to be in balance. How can I do that? Because the relationship side makes me come off as a weak leader. So I don't want sure. that. That's right. Is that your natural setting, though, the relational side? Yes, I um, I really like to please people, so that's why I became um, I was like a cult leader. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, so I became a relationship kind of leader, going back to my roots to say and say it like that. So yeah. Well, so my short answer to that, I'll if I pull up the screen again. Um, mm -hmm. Are you able to see that on the screen? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, so sometimes, and maybe I'll use this one actually because it's already filled in. The, the ideal journey eventually is to be balanced. And so for someone who's too heavy on task, they should go across the circle and balance themselves out. That's a long mm -hmm. arrow though. The shorter mm -hmm. journey is to do what you do, just do the healthy version of it. Mm -hmm. so if if what i'm hearing from you is that you're naturally pleasing and you like people and you're more relating the mm -hmm. easier thing to first do would be to focus on the team mm -hmm. so do the do the healthy version of relationship first so coach your people listen to them collaborate foster team play speak up for that because it's already in you and you know how important that is um, you're already here, so you're doing some work on your self-awareness by being here. And then maybe after that, pick one of these behaviors over here that seems like it would be the most helpful. And either have an example of this, someone you know who's good at this, and so ask them how they think about it or what they might say, or you could bounce ideas off them. Um, or... Uh, look at the leadership circle definitions for what's there and pick one out. So I think those are my two short answers to your question. Yes. Okay. Thank. Okay. Perfect. Fantastic. All right. Well, again, I yeah, we really appreciate taking the time. I've got to this a bit earlier, but it's okay if I send it now. If you also want to click on this link for to have it on you now, it's just a bit of a feedback form. It'll take you two minutes. Um, and we also ask for your email. So if you provide us with some really cool feedback, um, we'd love to then, I guess, reach out afterwards and see if we can then try to collaborate with the leadership as well. So 
use that as a, an opportunity as well for going forward as well. Just click on the link that I sent in there um, and that'll take you to a different page. Again, thank you so much, Ono, for being a legend. Seriously, we really appreciate it. Super engaging, super exciting. Um, and we hope that, yeah, everyone keeps being safe, has a great day, um, and keeps being incredible humans. Thank you very See much. See you next time. Keep it up, Thanks. folks.